Good afternoon, everybody. Aquatic here, and let's hop right into the real report. If you guys find anything of value in this video, please hit the like button, leave a thumbs up down below so it helps me with the algo, and hit that subscribe with the notification bell. It really helps me out. All right, let's get into it. EU Nat Gas soars to record high as Gazprom announces new halt to flows. The Russian gas producer Gazprom said in a statement that it will halt gas flows via the Nord Stream pipeline on August 31st for three days. They said it is necessary to carry out maintenance every 1,000 hours of operation. Uh, an oil barrel equivalent basis, EU Natty, is trading at triple the U.S. equivalent, which comes back to a very common number uh, date when things were very bad, 2008 levels. As a reminder, flows are already at just 40% of capacity. Here we've got, again, European gas prices soar on planned Nord Stream closure as European gas prices hit a new record high uh, at the close of trading today on Friday. Gazprom announced that the Nord Stream pipeline would be closed, and the Dutch TTF gas futures contract jumped to a closing high of 257 euros. Sheesh! All right, hopping into some very bad news. Everyone run in circles, scream and shout, let your hair on fire. Not quite, but frankly, maybe. U.S. approves of Ukraine striking Crimea. Now, this is going to be a uh, quite the developments over the coming weeks and months. I think this could spark something uh, that we don't want to get involved in. Now, the comments came after a series of explosions at Russian military facilities in Crimea, including a major one at the Saki Air Base that reportedly destroyed nine Russian warplanes. Now, officially, Kiev hasn't taken credit for the incidents. However, this is where things get weird. Ukrainian officials have said they are preparing to use U.S provided weapons such as the HIMARS rocket systems to attack Crimea. You guys can see the problem there. We're already fighting a proxy war against the Russians and now they're going to be using our weapons to strike into Russian territory. Now say whatever you want, but the Crimean Peninsula is 90% ethnic Russians, I believe, and they voted overwhelmingly to be part of the Russian Federation uh, multiple times, I believe three different, um, especially most recently a few years back. Um, now, if they don't get their way, all the facts and definitions are put on the shelf and the live factories are going to go into overdrive, just like I'm going to show you in this article. Um, <laughs> it's obviously a U.S. instigated fiasco um, saying Crimea is fair game since the U.S. considers it Ukraine. Um, Ukraine and NATO nations don't recognize Crimea as Russian. And that's a threat to Moscow, Putin's saying. If any state, either Ukraine or a NATO country, thinks that Crimea is not part of Russia, it is a systemic threat to us. Which, we can get into the lengthier article. U.S. approves of Ukraine striking Russian-occupied Crimea. Attacking Crimea is fair game for Ukraine, and it has America's support to hit the Russians there. Now, Kiev was behind the three explosions this past week on the Russian annexed peninsula, per a CNN-obtained Ukrainian government document, including a large blast at the Saki Air Base that destroyed several Moscow warplanes. Again, the previous article updated nine of them. Now, no Ukraine official has publicly admitted to Kiev's involvement in the Crimea campaign, but Defense Minister Oleksiy Reznikov told Voice of America Wednesday that Ukraine hasn't ruled out striking the occupied territory Here's the kicker, with U.S. provided weapons. Again, you guys can put two and two together. Uh, that's not going to look good on the U.S.'s part. Senior U.S. administration told the National uh, Secretary Daily, or NASSEC Daily, the U.S. supports strikes on Crimea if Kiev deems them necessary, which them being at war with Russia, I'm sure they will deem necessary. Although, however, however, hang on, hang on. We don't select the targets, of course. They had to throw that one in. Uh, anything that happens and that they pursue on sovereign Ukrainian soil is by definition self-defense, which you can dispute here. They restate Crimea is Ukraine. Russia and the people in Crimea don't see it that way. 
Now, attacking Russian forces in Crimea is no different than attacking them around Kiev or Kherson in eastern Ukraine, uh, said Kurt Volker, former U.S. ambassador to NATO and special representative for Ukraine during the Trump administration. Even though they have been exceedingly clear Ukraine shouldn't use American-made weapons to attack inside Russia. So now we're flip-flopping back and forth. American-made weapons to attack inside Russia, which is Biden's official stance, which, again, President Joe Biden fears would spark World War III. Washington doesn't recognize Moscow's control over the forcibly seized peninsula. So, again, flip-flopping in the same paragraph. Now they hear the big takeaway, the world may witness more explosions in Crimea over the next two or three months, a top advisor to Zelensky said. So keep a very close eye on that. Again, I'm not going to keep harping on the same point, but using American-made weapons and striking, what, 90% ethnic Russians who voted to be part of Russia that Russia sees as Russian territory is not going to bode well for the U.S., and things could easily escalate. Now, the next biggest story, and then we're going to wrap this up nice and short today. Putin warns Macron large-scale catastrophe looms at the Ukraine nuclear plant. This could be an absolute catastrophic problem for all of Europe. Now, they're saying Friday the focus was ensuring the avoidance of disaster at the Zavorizhia nuclear plant in southern Ukraine. It's the single most concerning hotspot in the conflict, given the possibility of a nuclear accident. Over the past week, tit-for-tat accusations between Russian and Ukrainian forces have intensified amid warnings of, get this, another Chernobyl. If the standoff doesn't de-escalate, Russia, which has about 500 of its troops occupying the nuclear plant, which is the largest in Europe, uh huh, goes back to the energy crisis, has blamed Ukrainian forces for repeat shelling of the sensitive facility. Here's where things get interesting. Uh, they've said both presidents agree the need to send a team from the International Atomic Energy Agency to the plant. Uh, Ukraine's blaming Russian forces using the plant, which supplies broad swaths of Europe with power, as nuclear blackmail. Of course, just like Gazprom halting the pipelines is, I guess you can call, energy blackmail. Or leverage, in layman's terms. Now, Zelensky, here's where things get odd, has stated that anything that happens there will automatically be viewed as Moscow's fault. He also said in a statement on Saturday that his forces won't stop attempting to liberate it from Russian troops. So he just confirmed that he is shelling it and attacking the nuclear plant. He says every Russian soldier who either shoots at the plant or shoots using the plant as cover, which there's 500 of them using it as cover, must understand that he becomes a special target for our intelligence agents for our special services, services for our army, Zelensky said. It's clear that the plan has already been hit and partially damaged by shelling this month. Concern for its potential contamination has raised such that international monitors have begun modeling various disaster scenarios. They even have modeled a map here that I'm playing the clip in case of a nuclear disaster. Uh, this shows the released airborne radioactive contaminants would probably get dispersed. And... Down here from Bloomberg, already only two of six reactors at the Zavorizhia nuclear plant are operating, potentially leaving Ukraine's electricity grid facing collapse this winter. Well, they'll be in the same boat as the Germans, at least. Crisis spilling into neighboring European Union energy markets. So keep a close eye on that. That's got the potential to be very, very bad, especially as each side is simply blaming the other one. And the plant is already operating at a fraction of capacity. So that's our nuclear warning. We covered the U.S. approving strikes on Crimea. Uh, also, the European gas prices are soaring and the Nord Stream pipeline. So if you guys found anything in today's video interesting, again, please drop a like. I really, really appreciate it because that helps the YouTube algo out. Um, also, comments help. And of course, subscribe to stay up to date. Catch you guys in the next one. Bye.